Evening guys, um, welcome to the hangout in the crib. Today's hangout, as you can see, is just myself and the professor. Hello. Uh, the professor does apologise about being late. Um, yes, I do. Caught, caught in traffic, but he's happy now because he's got his whiskey, so it's all good. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, uh, basically, we're just going to be talking about the changes to the Forsaken mission. So... Uh, the new style for Saker mission, uh, what's the differences, what's that? Yeah, we got a little on the rockets and the stat blocks too, so. Yeah, so um, should we just go straight into it, Larry? Yep, let me uh, fire that up. All right. So, uh, like I said, we are talking about the new mission, the new prizes, new rockets, and new stat blocks. But first, we want to hop into the bug fixes and the schedule. Um, they fixed the uh, weapons on the Omega Behemoth. This one I noticed. Didn't care, but I guess they fixed it. Um, and uh, they fixed an issue where the player's profile picture would fail to load after leading, leaving combat. I don't know. I noticed it's missing from chat a lot. Yeah, um... Uh, I don't know, really. There's other bug fixes that they could do. Yeah. Really. These are quite minor things when there's other things that they could be doing. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I just want to put up a couple schedule items for everybody to be uh, reminded. So, uh, raiding fleets tomorrow, um, Drac Attack token campaign Saturday, and then um, Forsaken Arena tournament. And again, they're saying July 28th, so that's a Tuesday. Uh, I don't know if it's really going to be Tuesday or if they really meant to say the 30th, but they said July 28th, so. Maybe it's to, to try and get it in so it actually ends in July so it doesn't grow over. Seeing as though June's was in July, I don't know. <laughs> might, might be the case. Who knows? Who can tell kick size motivations? Yeah, it sounds like you're enjoying that whiskey. I am. Good. Um, yeah, actually, it's uh, Buffalo Trace uh, bourbon, so there. Nice. All right, so uh, new stat blocks also came out today. Uh, just uh, showed some examples and maybe highlighted a couple things. Uh, when you're in the dock and you hover over a ship... I noticed it was uh, multi-columns, and uh, it seemed like the number of columns was almost uh, dynamic uh, so that it wouldn't go off the bottom or top of the screen like it used to, so that's good. Um, and then uh, over on the right side, I showed the ship stat block when you pull it up, uh, when you like click on a ship in a fleet. So um, you notice the weapon range shows up on the weapon, but it's the base weapon range, doesn't include the modifiers. Uh, if you hover over a component, it'll show you the details of that. So I was hovering over laser targeting uh, to show you that. And then there's a scroll bar here, but you can collapse categories by clicking on the little arrow or uh, expand it by clicking on the arrow. So uh, it's all convenient and readable. I think, I think it's all right. I know some people were getting a little worked up about it when... Um, when it was proposed on the forums, but uh, I think it's nice. It's, it's all right. I don't mind it at all. Um, it'd be nice if we could go to Classic View as well, though. I, you know, I didn't get to try it. I thought they said there was going to be an option for that. Uh, I, to be honest, I haven't tried it either. Um, but, you know, if, it, if we have got Classic View as well, that would be ideal. Yeah. Um, maybe chat can tell us. Has Let's... anybody... Chat and see if we can have classic view. I'll see if somebody goes on chat, but I'll, I'll keep moving. I think we got a lot to go through today, so. Um, so the new Forsaken mission format, and uh, I called this slide the preamble, because <laughs> uh, apparently Kix I wanted to explain themselves before just foisting this on us. Um, so Doom Rooster said when he appeared on the other show. Uh, a few weeks back. He doesn't like to appear on our show, apparently. Um, that the Forsaken mission was changing to allow a reset, and uh, there would be no 
significant changes to the format. Um, however, uh, when they released it, uh, we see that there are significant changes to the format and uh, the explanations are that the tech levels of the Forsaken mission don't really reflect the state of the game as it stands. And that's probably true, wouldn't you say? It is and it isn't. Some things are, some things aren't. Yeah. It's, yes. yeah. it's a bit of, it's one of those, there's always one prize in there that's definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, when I get to the prize rundowns, um, you know, I think there's a lot more in each tier that's useful, so maybe that's a, a good point. Um, and then they're calling this, um, that we will now be offering event-level prizes in the Forsaken Mission in addition to the option to repeat the Forsaken Mission once a week. Can I just, um, I just want to go through and just read that comment again in normal language. Um, we realized following the last event that we didn't make enough money. So what we've done is we've taken the Forsaken mission, we've made it into another raid so that we can squeeze more coins out of you um, and put in some special prizes to make you want to do it because otherwise you wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. Is that about, about right? Well, um, yeah, we can talk about that. I, I was a little more positive when I made these slides, but after having done an 85, I'm maybe back to a little less positive. So, um, yeah, that's certainly a, uh, a defendable position. Perf. Well, I think, I think that's what a lot of people are, are saying. I mean, not necessarily me, myself, but I know that a lot of people are, are looking upon it that way. That's why I said it. So. Well, well, yeah, we, we let me let me just keep going, and, and we'll we'll talk about that some more, because because again, I, I the issue is, can you still can can most players still do the Forsaken mission without coining? Because I think previously most players could do Forsaken mission tier four without coining. Is that is it okay? So, so the question is, can you still do that? Yeah, we'll we'll go through that. I think we, it was probably the wrong time to bring it up, but you know, yes, I was just saying it, just saying it because that's what people are, are saying out there, and now we'll educate them as, as to why. Yeah, it's not yeah. really like that. All right, well let's let's keep going, and we'll 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 chat some more. So, um, targets versus points. So I think what you see is tier three is the new tier four, okay? So uh, four and a half million points is the new tier three level. Four and a half million points used to be the tier four level. Um, I think all the targets from 65 on down are, are still the same in terms of points and, and content. That, they are, yeah, as yeah. far as I'm aware. Okay. So, um, so right, so you've got you can still do the same targets for the same points over the same period of time and get tier 3 under the new system. So tier 3 is the new tier 4. And even the uranium matches, right? The uranium you get from the first three tiers in the new mission is actually 1,500 more than the uranium from the four tiers of the old mission. All right? So basically, um, what we're saying is that if you continue to do your forsaken mission as you have been doing for the last god knows how many weeks years. you are years whatever it may be so basically you're actually better off than what you were in in the first place except for one thing and that is that the newest prizes from the forsaken mission are going to be introduced on the elite tier yeah <laughs> but Everything else up to now that's been released into Tier 4 um, is still going to be available in Tier 3. Yeah, that's right. Um, again, so if you reset, the points go up. You can, you can reset. Um, I didn't come out and say that explicitly, but you can do the uh, Forsaken mission twice. But I think that twice has to be within the same three-day period. 
right? I believe so. Yep. I think on the forum, he, he, uh, Doom Rooster said that was the case, but they would be uh, evaluating that and possibly changing in the future. So, um, I think realistically, um, I would say that probably doing the elite stage um, twice within a week is, is going to be, um, well, within three days, is going to be a bit of a push for a lot of players. Yeah. It, it's quite a lot of targets to hit, um, yep. especially if you struggle with 85s. So if you're doing 65s, that's a hell of a lot of 65s that you need to be doing within three days. Yeah. Yeah. It's 100 and some. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, I think realistically it'd be nice if you could, if you still got obviously a week to do it, but you had the three days for doing each of them. So when you reset it, your time resets as well. I think it would, it would yeah. be better. Agreed. Because uh, I mean, agree. you're all already getting a penalty because you've got to get more points the second time round. So, you know, that's, that's your penalty already. I don't think that you should be getting a penalty on time as well. Yep. So, um, so they introduced these two new targets, right? The 75 and the 85. Um, the 85 is worth 6,400 points, um, but these new targets are uh, quite a bit harder, I would say. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing is, if you do 185, you're done with the first three tiers. So, <laughs> that's something. This is true. Um, I mean, you, the new targets are all right, but you know, I can't stress enough that if you prep them, they're, they're going to be a lot more easy. Right. Um, you know, you, you can prep them out with subs. Um, it takes a bit of jiggling. You need to go in with the fleet, um, coax some ships out, kill that. You know, Crusaders is perfect for that, um, or anything Rabalus cannons on. Um, kill those off first, and then you can go in with your subs and take the Kodiaks out from inside. Um, you can also use Reapers as well. And um, Reapers with four Deluge missiles um, with the setup that's on the BPC page um, can take out all of the Tor Towers as well, which will reduce massively the amount of damage that you're going to take. Hmm. I didn't notice those uh, Torp Towers actually doing that much damage, but... Um... I, mean, I just was able to run through 185 before the show. That's all I've done so far. It, well, you know, it's it's still going to reduce your damage, even if it's not yeah. doing a lot of damage. It, yeah. If they're not there, they're not going to do any other. So yeah. Yeah. it's just my opinion of it, really. Yeah. yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Preps, preps are preps, and preps will help. Uh, let's see what else I said. So um, I made this slide when I was maybe a little more positive, right? So so if you take the attitude that tier three is tier four, you know, that, that that's what you had, right? And then you've yeah. got this extra tier and new prizes, right? Uh, yeah, it's good. It's so great. It. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a lot more positive now. Yeah. It helps. I don't. I don't see how anybody could could be on. You know, negative about it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we want to talk? Uh, actually, I think this is maybe um, from now on. I'm going to get into the prizes. Do we want to talk a little more about the the details of that 75 and 85? Here, while uh, yeah, we the can do. young ladies on the screen. We can do. Yeah. Um, one thing that I will say is, you know, um, like I said, if you. Could, if you can, if you've got Crusaders, um, and Frostburn, anything like that, with those, um, obviously that fleet is going to help you out massively to do it. Um, something that doesn't work is um, sub decoys. They do not work whatsoever. Um, so don't bother wasting your time. Um, the tall towers, there are certain angles that they won't fire at you um, if you're coming alongside on the corners then they won't fire hmm. um, but you know you can take those out with the reapers quite easily um, there are wendigos in there there's two wendigos one at either end so um, make sure you've got a frostburn or an aegis i mean personally what i've been doing is so i've been going in with um 
a Jugex Mastodons and um, an Aegis taking out all of the ships that come out um, at you. Take all of those out for, for very minimal damage to the to the Jugex. And then I've been just sending my Reapers in and taking out all of the Torp Towers and then and taking the Kodiaks out from the inside, um, which is quite easy to do. Uh, you can also do that with Nighthawks. Um, Rob has got a video up as well, which will be very helpful to people to, to have a look at. Um, and then, obviously, I've just been finishing it off with um, a Frostburn as a lead ship um, and some R10 Dreadnoughts with um, Arborous Cannons on and an Aegis, just reducing the damage down. I, mean, I can get it down to about a five-coin repair, which is pretty good prep. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, like I said earlier, I've I've just tried the 185, and and I didn't even really do any prep. I just uh, blew through with my Frosty Crusaders. Uh, my Frosty's got got uh, good countermeasures on it, but uh, they still took, uh, uh, I guess it was about a 12 coin repair. Just kind of looped around the outside, and then and then went to the inside. Um, One thing I will say as well is, um, don't forget there is mortars in there. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, you know, don't sit too long because you're going to get hammered. Yep. You, you want to keep moving, but you want to be aware of where the rocket turrets are. Um, yep. So yeah, I, I watched one of my ally mites drive right through multiple rocket turrets and, and die, and I felt kind of bad for him because um, that was yeah. not smart. Yeah, it's, it's not a good idea. Um, it's going to increase your damage ma massively. Um, I'd rather take one or two mortars than take a rocket. Yeah. So, so, you know, just make sure you stop for those. I think it's another good good tip. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know. I. I mean. At, at a glance, right? Your your keys are are kind of the same as any of your strongholds, right? It's it's high evade and and good phalanx and keep moving so you don't get mortared. You know. It, it's they're the same but harder. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely. So you know, um, <clears throat> it's definitely worth um, having a countermeasure hull in there. Right. And that's going to reduce your damage. It's it really is very much similar to all of the rest of them, um, just a bit harder. You know, some of the ships are going to do more damage to you. Um, you've got a pick out what you want to take out and prep a bit, but uh, it's not just something that you can run through blindly with, you know, you can have to break it down a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I did do it in that one shot, but I did at least kind of sit around and wait for the ships that came out after me to come out after me, um, so I didn't try to kill everything at once. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, you know, the... <sighs> Whenever Kickside changes stuff like this, it, it certainly seems really hard at first, and then people get used to it, people figure it out a little better. So uh, I'm not going to get too worked up uh, right off the bat. Um, but but so here's the thing, right? If you if you think about what it's going to take to to get 50 million points, um, that is going to be uh, what, seven or eight of these 85s. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's not too taxing. Um, well, well, but, but here's it's, it's time consuming. It, it, well, right. Let's, let's say eight eight eighty fives. Yeah, and so if you're taking six hours of damage from an eighty five, and you have to do that over three days, um, you're going to have to really, really, really manage your time well. To, to work that, you know, essentially you're getting 48 hours of repair over, you know, you have 72 hours to do it. So if you want to do that without coining, um, it's going to be tough, right? You're going to have to sort of always have access <laughs> to, to play at those times when your ships are repaired. Um, yeah, part of, this is partly the reason that I've, um, that I used two different fleets rather than just using the one fleet um, 
So rather than using Crusaders to take the ships out, I use Mastodons. Um, it's just really because I can get away with using my dreads to finish the um, the actual thing up itself, all of the turrets, um, quite easily. Um, and I'll, usually the only ship that's going to take any damage is going to be my Frostburn. Um, so that being said, I, what I can do is I can take the Frostburn and the Jug when, once they're both dead, put them in to repair as a fleet, and away you go. It's just, it's just another way that's sort of um, limiting the amount of damage to one fleet so it's easy to repair. Yeah, yeah. It's just because if you're going to take more damage to one fleet, it's going to be a longer time, isn't it? Rather than having two ships that are going to take damage that you can stick in and repair. Maybe it's right. a bit better. Right. All right. Well, should we move move on from this uh, clearly high-maintenance young lady and uh, talk about the prizes? Um, yeah, I think we should see so in comms someone's put Great, now I'm watching the crib with a boner, damn it. <laughs> nice. So, All right. yeah, pro probably a good idea. <laughs> All right, so moving on to uh, kill that boner. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, sorry. Knocking around some glassware here. Anyway, um, so I just went through the prizes, and I just kind of highlighted some of the things in green, which I thought were good prizes and didn't highlight what I didn't like. Um, so you see in the new Tier 1, um, there's some good stuff, and, and there's stuff that used to be in Tier 2. You know, I always like D2 and D3 armors because it, it just gives you a lot of flexibility when you're building your ships. Um, I noticed one of the Alloy Level 3 was in there, Hailstorm 3, Phalanx 1, Battlecruiser. Uh, Firebat 1 has its uses. I, I love those on a Monarch. Um, There's some so, really good stuff in there, really, <clears throat> for Tier 1 yeah. now. Some yeah. really, really good stuff that you you know, you wouldn't really be looking at having in there. That would always be Tier 3 sort of stuff for lots some of the stuff that's in there, especially right. like the Alloy Armor. Yeah. I think you have missed one out, though. I, I do quite like the Negotiator Mortal 1 as well. Yeah, 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 okay, fair enough. I do quite like that. <laughs> Those will probably be rotating through, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, for the weight, because the weight on the negotiator is, um, is quite sliding, and it's pretty much the, the same damage for weight across the lot. Right, right, so, right, the negotiators are flat in that, in yeah. that respect. So, you know, you can use more negotiator ones, rather than using negotiator threes on a fleet, just for instance, so that you've got more mortars in the air so that it gets through targets better. Yeah, that, that actually also helps your uh, ship build time if, you, if you've got the weapon slots for it. It does. The smaller ones will build faster, or more smaller ones will build faster than the same weight of a larger one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's see, uh, moving on to Tier 2. Uh, there's, again, a lot of stuff I liked. Uh, Strike System 3, uh, I really like. Firebats, Phalanx, all the armors. Uh, countermeasure Equipment 3, especially you're going to need countermeasures to do these uh, Forsaken missions. Um, I left off uh, Compound Plate 1 and 2. I, I see players using them sometimes, but in, in terms of build time and, and the protection, actually the, the lower level compounds are not a good deal. No, they're not. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Uh, Gauss is in there. Uh, launchers with a, you know with the uh, D98U launcher. Gauss, although uh, we'll get to the new uh, charge special. Strike Missile B, that's always a favorite. And... Uh, Rad suppressor again with with people uh, uh, in uh, launchers probably making a comeback. You might want some rad suppressors in your base. Um, yeah, explosive plate. Can help a little. Yep, yep. Explosive plate three um, for locusts and and against rockets. It's one of my favorites at the minute. Explosive plate three. Um, 
previously it was only available in once in the Forsaken mission and once in the raid when we told you to have it and that's since it, the plate armors have been out so it's really good to see that in there mm-hmm. I think because a lot of people missed out on the explosive plates big time so okay I know there's people that have been waiting for that for like 18 months plus wow all right uh, moving on to the next levels, um, Tier 3. Again, I like just almost everything in Tier 3. Um, MCX, yeah, it used to be my favorite hull in the game. And um, unfortunately these days, even, even with the R10, I don't know if I could justify the build time when you've got mm. interceptors and you've got mercuries. You know, I'd rather have an interceptor than an MCX. And, and so many things that do, do what it does better. Yeah. And, and for yeah. less build time. Yeah. Unfortunately, I love my MCXs myself. You know, I, I'm quite partial to uh, missile holes. But yeah. I have to say, it's not really doing it for me anymore. Yeah. Um, let's see, but but again, lots of good prizes. Uh, D4X, Nuclear Accelerator, I know some people have been waiting for that. Uh, Fallout Armor 3, I tend to not use it because I prefer reflective coat, but it's still really useful, I think, in, in some places. I think, it, I think it actually goes really nice on SCXs. It's where Fallout is useful. Yeah, there is there's a, some good uses for it. I do like... I do actually like it myself on, for a few things, but, but yeah, I do agree with the, the reflective coat, coating and um, D5X is... Usually a better way to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Blaze, Deluge 3 for your uh, Reapers. Firebat 3 for your fleets that are going to spam Firebats. Permacrete, really useful in your turrets. Uh, fuel air munitions if you want to help your uh, mortars. Barracuda, um, I think that one's really big in the, in the Forsaken mission. Uh, there haven't been any prize subs um, in Forsaken Mission before. And so I, I really like seeing the Barracuda in there. Um, Bypass Chain Gun 3, those are pretty good, although I guess you'd probably rather have an Arbalest. Uh, Locus. I, <laughs> Shielded Tactical, I, I don't know. I still don't even know what that's for. Well, it combines... Was it combined? Shielded Electronics and Tac Field Resistance? Well, yeah, but most, a lot of ships have got that built in now. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, uh, it's to me when I own Aegis's and a Frostburn it doesn't really affect me. I understand if you haven't got got those two, <clears throat> but you know when it come out, I was like, is that really a tier four prize? Yeah, yeah, it just yeah. Um, let's see, we got the new lockdown rockets. I'll go into a little more detail on those later. Uh, compound 4, again, if you're going to use compound, that's the one you want to use. Um, Magnus Drive, great for subs. Impulse Launcher S, again, I would have highlighted it, but you know, you got the new U launcher that you really want a lot more. Excuse me. And then the uh, structure token. So lots of good stuff on Tier 3. Uh, you know, it would be tough to call any of it garbage. Um, yeah. I, I would like to say, though, that the Barracuda is the new Reaper. Get it up to R10 if you can and play about with builds. There might be one on the VPC page very soon. Yeah. Yeah. For those of us that don't want to take the time to build Reapers, that might be a good option, actually. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely. Myself. <laughs> I've got some old Kudas with, like, I haven't even put B torps on them yet, so. Yeah, I, I've still got some Havoc torpedo um, barricaders. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mine are like three Havocs and three Assault X or something like that. It's crazy. Yeah, I think um, mine are all Havoc fours. I think. No, kick your butt with mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so let's see. And then on the elite tier, so we've got the Arbalest, which um, we know is a really good weapon. 
Uh, we've got the new Fusion Charger, which is like the Gauss, but better. And uh, Synthonite D5R. Um, again, I'll, I'll get into the details on that, but it does up the rad resistance as well as being the D5 level armor. And then if you pick up everything from the Elite tier, uh, you can get a two-day ship build token. So um, that's pretty good, right? It's theoretically worth 96 coins. Yeah, I mean, if you can if you can get that far, then it sounds good. I mean, that also opens up to like an extra, what, six days build tokens a month if you do the Elite and then the resets? Well, if you figure there's three Forsaken missions every four weeks, um, and if you do them both twice, you could actually earn four tokens per four-week period. So that's eight days extra out of every 28. Well, they go up. So, you know, add that to the ones that you get in the campaign as well. I mean, that's yeah. another reason to do it, I suppose. But again, it's the thing we're always going to say with, with tokens is you need to make sure that the amount that you spend in to do it, to get those tokens, doesn't exceed the value of it. That's right. That's right. But again, 48 hours worth 96 coins, so... All right. So, so let's talk about the prizes themselves. We got lockdown rockets. In case you need to lock it down. Um, so these are a medium weight rocket. Um, they don't do a whole lot of damage. And um, I noticed there's a 12 second reload time. So um, that's long. Um, but they do have very high splash. And, and Well, not very high, but high splash and very high spread. And I guess the idea there is that the salvo of six will spread out and try and uh, lock down ships in the maximum area possible. Um, I mean, this is realistically, to me, is more if you've got a gore saber in your base guard. Really. It's slowing them down so you can, can hit them with your uh, rockets. Because otherwise, and I've seen a lot of times, so I, I can just run past a lot of gore sabers. Mm. With the speed that I've got. So I, mean, know, I think this can help a lot. Yeah, you know, I was thinking open water combat for this, and, and, and that's why I wrote that question. You know, is your target going to outrun the effect, you know, if you try and use this in a dredge or something? Um, but yeah, for a, for a base guard, if you put a Gore Saber in there, uh, these would probably be very useful. Um, you know, I said, again, thinking open water. Uh, you'd want to use these in combination with your low salvo, high damage rockets, and and by that I mean your your dragon fires or your infernos, because um, if these fire at the same time as your, you know, like a maelstrom or something, um, then your maelstroms are going to hit behind the target at the same time these things slow it down, and then you're going to have to wait for the reload before you fire more rockets. So. Um, that's why you want to use these with with some rocket that's that's firing more continuously than these. Yeah, definitely your infernos or your um, neon dragon fires. Yep, yep. And then um, with that very long reload time, uh, you you now have a reason to rank your core sabers past thirty three percent because uh, obviously you won't be hitting max reload uh, with these. Well, we all knew that they were going to give us a reason for it, didn't we? I mean, come on. Well, I, I know what we'll do. We'll make make everybody build them because they only need 33% rank to, for everybody to be really happy and then to be as good as they can possibly do. But then what we'll do is we'll release something in the Forsaken Mission that we'll fucking write over. You really got your tinfoil hat on today, don't you, Earth? <laughs> well, well, I'm only repeating what people have said to me. Okay. Okay, so you're like the tinfoil hat uh, aggregator. <laughs> yeah, more, something like that. All right. All right, let's uh, move on from the lockdown uh, to the fusion charger. So this is an elite tier prize, um, and it does essentially obsolete the Gauss. Um, so, so there's that. Um, 
it adds 20% to your weapon weight instead of 14% for your gauss. Um, so that's obviously a little more. Um, but with double the supercharge and this extra shockwave damage, um, you know, if you if you need to drop a launcher to have the weight for fusion chargers, it's definitely going to be worth it. Um, this looks like it's going to be nuts. Yeah. Especially if you put it on a fusion cruiser. Does it stack? That is the question. Well, you know, from... I, I am very frustrated with, with Kixai's explanation of this whole supercharged stacking. Um, you know, back when the S launchers came out with the Gauss, right, everybody was expecting, oh, 8x and 1.5x, you'll get 12x if you put Gauss with the S launchers. Well, that's not the case. You get 8.5 because you add them, and you only add what's past 1, apparently. Um, but then... Uh, when you looked at the Fusion Cruiser, uh, it, it, on the blueprint, if you put Gauss Charger on a Fusion Cruiser, it does show you with the 4.5x, uh, which would be multiplying, not... Well, it's multiplying and adding, but you're not adding and subtracting one the way that Gauss and uh, the S launcher stacked. So there's that. Um, and then, actually, I got a PM today from another player uh, who told me that the actual stat he had done some testing, and the actual stacking on the Fusion Cruiser was 1.5x, not 3x. So um, there's that. You know, who knows if the Fusion Cruiser is really uh, charging the way it's supposed to with or without stacking. Um, so I, I think this whole supercharge at least if you're a numbers guy, is, is just a mess. And, and, and yeah, yeah, I think no, it's broke. There's no sense to be made of it right now. Yeah, I definitely think it's broke, personally. Yeah. So, yeah. Because, uh, I, I mean, if you do the numbers on the, on how many, um, so, you know, if you've got 30 launches in a fleet, every single time it releases its full salvo, you should get a shockwave up to 79% of aid. Um, so I know I've seen fleets with that many launchers on that aren't getting that shockwave for at least like three salvos. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's working right or as advertised, should we say. Yeah, yeah. And I, I you know, I don't know whether it's maybe it's not the, the number of stacks you need is not really 60. I think that may be an option or maybe a possibility. Um, so there's there's just a lot that's unknown right now and I I just wouldn't I mean I wouldn't say don't build this, but I'd say don't try to do some calculations and build something precise and expect that your calculations are going to be right. <laughs> yeah. But doesn't that really go for a lot of stuff in this game? To be fair. Well, like I've got a battle cruiser fleet, or had a battle cruiser fleet with D92Us, and you know I knew that two salvos would make a shock against buildings. You know, it was very predictable. So yeah. you know, you know, you 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 can do stuff like that in this game, but you just not with this right now. Not with a stack. Yet. I think that a lot of a lot of my issues with, with trying to work out numbers on stuff <clears throat> is um, is more to do with the fact that there's so many hidden mechanics that you know Kixai don't let us have access to, and you know hidden numbers like minimum amount of damage that a weapon will do. Um, yeah. The, you know there is a, a set flat damage. That a weapon will do you can't reduce it right down to one and they won't let us know what that number is and there's you know there's a lot of stuff that yeah yeah you're you're right earth and um so yeah do we lose you oh. okay we might have lost earth so um i'll just keep plowing through and hopefully he comes back Earth, give a yell if you get back on. I'm back. Um, 
So then the other question I had here about this uh, fusion charger is what do they mean by max shockwave damage versus shockwave damage? That also makes no sense to me. So um, there's that. And um, with that, we'll just say if this fusion charger works as advertised, it is an astoundingly powerful special. But uh, I can't say that for sure because I don't know how it's going to work in practice. No, um, you know, if if I win it, I'll no doubt test it out a little bit, see what we can find out. Yeah. But yep. yeah, um, it does look very powerful. I do apologise about cutting out there. Um, don't know what <laughs> went on. <laughs> Good to have you back. The screen just all went black and went. Ah, don't know what's going on. <laughs> Come back in straight away. So too bad. All right. All right, so I'm going to move on to the D5R, and um, or as we like to call it in Battle Pirates, D5R. Um, come on, that was funny. Uh, okay, so um, D5R, it's another D5, uh, weighs the same and has the same armor points as the other D5 armors, um, or armors. <laughs> but it gives you increased uh, radioactive resist, 14%. Uh, versus the D4R, which has 10%. And um, I just threw up this old chart here um, in case you want some of the math here. Um, we don't know the build time yet of this D5R, um, but I, I use the D5E or D5U. And so um, you see the bulkhead is the most efficient in terms of armor points per ton, uh, followed by compound plate, and then depleted uranium-4, and then the D5s. Uh, build time per ton, again, Reaver bulkhead is, is the big winner. Uh, pretty much twice as fast as um, D5. Or uh, you can look at a build time per armor point. And again, Reaver bulkhead is great. Um, D5 is, is the worst of these large armors for build time per armor point. So um, just some numbers there for you. Yeah, I mean, D5 armors do give you that extra little little bit of defense, um, be it, you know, evade or that extra little bit of ballistic or radioactive or some defense. So, you know, you've got to take that little bit of hit. Yep. With like, and I, I guess the question is, and, and I, I mean, I guess each player is going to have to decide for themselves, is this the new D5E, right? Um, D5E has been kind of the standard for, you know, what armor should I put on my ship, right? If you're not sure, just put more D5E. Um, so Agreed. We'll have to... Go ahead. Everybody, everybody loves D5E. Yeah. I love it myself, so. Yeah. So we'll have to see. I, I guess it depends on how prevalent launchers become. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, with the way that it looks at the minute, I think um, it might actually be more beneficial in some cases to add one ra radioactive plate on there rather than um, an extra T5E. Right, right. Like if your if your evade starts to get maybe you know in the seventies and your radioactive defense is in the fifties. You know, you're going to get more benefit uh, from that from adding the R armor instead of the E, especially with the new um, launcher having such a high accuracy as well. Yep. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I think that's it for the prizes. Let's talk about XL rockets. So. Um, I just put up the summary of each of the new rockets here. Um, you've got these new fleet anti-fleet rockets, uh, the Daisy Cutter and the Widowmaker. Um, this has pissed me off. <laughs> uh, I've got to admit, I'm sorry to say it, but having a Daisy Cutter that does 32,000 damage from a rocket and versus fleets is just stupid. It's a four-second flight time, too, so that's pretty uh, freaking accurate. Well, I quite like it in one sense that my Reapers are going to be used a lot 
Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because that's stupid amount of damage. Yeah, yeah. And just about any sonar spotter is going to die. The only thing that's not is going to be an Amiga, really, isn't it? To be honest. Wow. So, just, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, well. Maybe this is their way of giving back to the people who built Reapers and then got shafted. All right, so those are your anti-fleet rockets. Uh, you've got your anti-building rockets. So your new XL Bunker Buster um, will do enough damage to take out most turrets, unless uh, I think unless they have permacrete. Um, bunker Buster is going to take take out the turret. If people are going to really annoy me now. Um, I'm going to build lots of large Orions and just bunker, just take out all of their. Um, Apox in the base and some more mass too. Yes. Well, <laughs> 9,000 damage from a Orion, that's not going to take out a level 4 and definitely not a level 5 turret. That's right, multiple rockets, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Earth. You can do what I did. Fix I thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm kidding, but you know. That's quite a big jump in the, in the damage on the Orion, and with the amount of um, you know area that you can cover, that's going to be able to sort of like do that. Yeah. Quite well. Yeah, you're right. So uh, you know, it's just it's all a bit of fun. I wouldn't actually do that. I'll never use more than one rocket in an attack, but but there are those that have. Yeah. And I think this is bringing back their game a bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, two Orions on a center island. If right, no, most people do not armor or or protect those turrets. So, um, you know, eighteen thousand damage will take out a level five turret. Yeah, if you've got if you've got to do it in order, to, you know, if your fleets just aren't up to par against you know Apox and stuff like that, and they've got them grouped nicely for you. And you want to hit them really badly, then you know, feel free. Yeah, I guess. Thank you for supporting the game. Um, but I, you know, I think the XL Bunker Buster has some really good uses, right? You drop that on a Wendigo. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's one one thing that I I am quite liking actually. Drop that on a Wendigo. Um, I know a lot of people haven't got the Frostburn or the Aegis and. Wendigos are quite a problem for their fleets and stuff and, and reduces their, the bases that they can hit massively. Yeah. So it's, it's a good thing for that. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then uh, I put the depth charge on this page. Again, it's got a lot of splash. It surfaces your subs. Um, it's not really enough damage to take out, like, Nighthawks, but um, if it surfaces them, then hopefully something can kill them. And then, um, so uh, since I had a little space in the slide, I did decide to throw it in there that each of these XL rockets is a uh, two day, two week uh, research time, and uh, sixty million resources, but no uranium. So, yeah, there are two different types of pinch rocket as well. Yeah, pinches. Next slide. I'll get there. All right. Okay. So, um, let's talk pinch. And uh, since uh, these sort of all changed. Um, I kind of threw them up as a chart. So um, this is a screenshot from my uh, weapons lab after this was released. So if you had the old small, medium, and large pinches researched, you now have the small, long pinch, the medium, quick pinch, and the medium, long pinch. So congratulations. Um, if you look at what the stats are on these pinches, uh, the quick pinches all have a six second flight time and a splash of 18. Okay, so, and that's again, that's a radius. Um, so there's really no advantage to a small p 
pinch anymore versus the larger size pinches in in either of either type right because the the flight time and the, the area same. of effect is the same yeah so now you're instead of building a small pinch to get a quick flight time you're just going to want to build a quick pinch of the largest size you have um, if you're going after a quick flight time um, so and then you can see on, on the chart there uh, the the stun time for fleet and building goes up as you get to the larger sizes and so the quick pinch starts at seven seconds against the fleet goes up to 10 seconds against the fleet isn't that a less than what it was you know i i don't remember I, I can't tell you i'm pretty sure it is yeah now um if you go to the long pinch um the fleet stun time is less than oh, the quick pinch um but <laughs> but the building stun time actually gets pretty astounding. Um, 28 seconds for an XL long pinch. So that can really, um, you know, you talked about um, using a couple of Ryans on, on the center island. Well, if you drop a single long pinch on the center island, uh, y y that's going to take a lot of heat off you for a long time. right? I, th I think the old this pinch duration... I want to say it was like 12 seconds because you'd really only stop like one javelin shot. Yeah, it's like it is. 12, I think it was about 12 seconds. Um, yeah. This is, I mean, the long pinches is going to help out a ton if you like to snipe things out. Um, with bases, for instance, you know, if you can reach something on the center island with um, with mastodons and you want to drop one of these on on the apox so it's gonna reduce your damage max massively yeah yeah that so i mean that's a good use for it in the base yeah. if you've got to stop in order to take out something that you can't move past it's obviously going to be good for that it's going to bring a lot of tactics back i think instead of just going quick just rush through don't care about the damage just send hellhounds in so, you know, so it's always going to be good. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I prefer a tactical game rather than super noobs with um, I win fleets. It's, you know, I think it's always better to prep and, and take stuff out. And a, a lot of people um, say, oh, "Oh, you're such a pussy because you wouldn't want hit." Well, yeah, I may be a pussy, but you're dumb if you're spending seventy-one coins and I'm spending five. You know, for for me, um, in Battle Pirates, pussy is a code word for you're doing something that I don't like. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so, you know. Put it, put it this way, somebody did not like me taking their entire guard fleet out and then um, walking in there. What did I walk in with? It was a fleet to fleet. Um, fleet that I used to, to smash his base up. I mm. took 49 medals off of them. <laughs> he wasn't very happy. Yeah. 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 Mm. Don't leave yourself open to traps. Yeah. Well, it's going to be tough with. Uh, what do you got? You got those. Uh, was it the Daisy Cutter? The Widowmaker? I don't know. Lots of rocket choices now. It's going to take you a while to research them all, but. Um, a lot of choices. Um, I can tell you now that it's not taking me very long at all to research the Daisy Cutter. <laughs> okay, Irv. Some of us are going to depend on our research tokens. Um, yeah, I actually started on the, I think I started on the large long pinch. Um, again, if, if, you're, if you're like me and you already had all these rockets researched, there's no reason to ever research the small pinch because um, the medium pitch out does it so uh, keep that in mind but um, yeah so um, since they're talking about XL rockets uh, kicks I missed the XL rocket that is most near and dear to my heart the Pegasus XL which um, you know people sometimes say this game isn't rocket science but uh, you know I am a qualified rocket science who used to launch stuff into space so um, there you go. That is the Pegasus XL, which uh, did actually used to um, 
spit out a message on its terminal, fly me into space, big boy. So um, there you have it. Pegasus <laughs> XL. Near and dear we, to my heart, but missing from Battle Pirates. We need a Pegasus rocket. We're going to have to start a, some sort of movement to get one added. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how many uh, how many resources is uh, twenty million dollars? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'd be able to work it out. Yep, yep, yep. So um, that's it for the slides this week. Yeah, quite a lot to get through. It's been busy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this stuff came out today, so I was uh, quite busy. Yes, and we do thank you very <laughs> much. So, yeah, um, just going to have a look at through uh, in, in comments and in chat. Is um, has anybody got any uh, anything that they want um, want to say about any of the stuff that we've brought up today? Um, is, are there any questions? Anything like that? Is there anybody who's used uh, extra large Daisy Cutter yet? <laughs> um, let's have a look. <coughs> no, not a lot of people there. So, but yeah, the, everybody's going. Oh my God, the damage on the large Daisy Cutter. Yeah, yeah, it'll take it's, out a lot of ships. It's, yeah. If we, can we get some sort of, like, um, turret or something that shoots down rockets? <laughs> <laughs> Strategic defense initiative. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think we're going to need it. But, yeah, oh, it's just, wow. Well, the only thing that I'm going to say on it is that <clears throat> I'm going to have to start adding bulkhead to some something in my base that I didn't think that I'd need to. Mm. But now I definitely need to. Well, I mean, well, it's 32,000 explosive. So, you know, you, you at least have your explosive resist to do something there. Um, but you know who's going to really suffer is, um, you know, there is some splash on it. And, you know, some people really like to have their uh, defense fleets move to to stack up. Uh, that's going to be a dangerous strategy. Agreed. That's going to hurt a lot of stuff, especially if they haven't got very high explosive defense on it. I mean, yeah. I purposely on my Viper have um, very high explosive defense for this very reason, mm. but it's not quite enough. <laughs> at the minute, so that's going to get changed very quickly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of damage, so I would suggest people look into ways of where they're going to change it. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. So anything else good from chat? Sorry, I, I since I was running late, I'm not able to, never fired up the window for to, to take a look. Um, no, not really. The visual on the fusion charger is wrong, but the performance is the same. What? Whatever that means, I don't, I'm not sure. If um, Lerardo could fill us in a bit more on that, that would be a deal. Yeah, I, I mean, I just grabbed it off the uh, Kixai forum, so. Um, three, three to four. Four rockets, three to four days, daisy cutters to take out one enforcer with like nearly 20k armor. Someone's with 80% explosive defense. Someone said. Um, last time I had my had a bunker buster on my sub defense. I think it was about four or five large bunker busters. <laughs> um, how long is the build time uh, on the new rocket? I haven't actually had a look yet, mate. But um, we will be posting it up there, so it will all be good. As soon as I can figure out, I'm going to get a few people building different ones, 
at the minute all doing researches on different ones so that we can um, try and get the, the build times out there for you. Uh, that's that. Um, don't think there's anything else. Well, I used a Daisy XL on a fleet today and it was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was. I... Nobody expects a DZ XL. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it killed a Crusader fleet. So happy days. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Have you got all anything right. you wanted to add at all? I'm I'm finished. I drank I drank my bourbon. It's all empty. It's all empty. It's, it's well, empty. it's not all empty. <laughs> it's, it's no good if it's empty you've got to top it back up again yeah so yeah uh, but you know in summary if you've been doing the forsaken mission you can still do it to tier 3 to the same amount you don't have to do it twice um, up to elite you can reset it from tier 3 if you've got things that you're missing so do that if you have no intention of going to the elite bracket, um, get on and do it if you can. Um, enjoy the extra uranium that you're going to get from doing that. Um, <clears throat> well, well, hold on. You only get uranium the first time. You don't get uranium on the reset. Agreed. Um, but you still get one, is it 1.5k more yeah, uranium. Yeah, a little bit extra. Yeah. So it's a little bit extra. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's good. Um, yeah, uh, we've got a few videos of how to do 85s. Um, I'm going to do one of the way that I do it. I know that Rob's already done one and has posted it. So check that out. It's um, it's a really good video. So it gives you some good insight into how you can do it. Yeah, I guess I won't do one until I figure it out a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, go watch his video because it's it is a really yeah. I watch Rob's definitely. Yeah, so um, don't forget to take to check out the um, Battle Pirates Quick page, Larry's blog. Um, check out the fleet builds. Um, obviously, we will be posting <clears throat> the uh, slides from this and also the videos to the BBC page. So make sure you check that out. And um, we should catch you all on Friday. Um, if you do want to be on the show Friday, um, as it's a community show, uh, message the BPC page. Or if you're um, friends with any of us, <clears throat> just message message us. And we can sort it out for you. Uh, yep. It is first come, first serve. Uh, there are 10 spots. So, yeah, just, uh, just message us as soon as you can. Uh, let us know. It's going to be the same time as our usual shows, so we're all good there. Um, and you know, we'll be able to give you a little bit more info on Friday, some videos and stuff like that, um, when people have figured out a few more things to do with the new Forsaken Mission targets. So thank you very much for joining us, and um, we shall see you again Friday. Good night. Goodbye.